Greetings everyone. So today I thought I should really test out 60 hertz versus 120 hertz as a comparison for myself. And to be honest, the difference is actually shocking. It might not be that easy to notice if you've only used 120 or 144 whatever hertz for a short period of time. But I've used my 8T OnePlus phone now for about close to two months, I think. And I got the iPhone 11 from work for free actually, but I can't use it. Everything on the phone feels laggy. Now you of course won't be able to see how big the difference is between 60 and 120 Hertz, but I don't know if this, if you actually can see this. But the icons on the right for me moves so much more smoothly. And it's the same thing when you go into things like settings. When I'm scrolling on the iPhone, I feel I can, I'm having problems to read the text when I'm scrolling fast. But on this phone, it's like much easier. But yeah, of course, the text here is smaller, but everything feels so laggy. It feels like I'm using like a five-year-old phone that I just pick up from. Yeah, it's, um, it feels really slow compared to this one. Now, how is this in everyday use? Of course, I browse Reddit. I use Facebook, I use Twitter, I use Discord. And it's crazy how much the 120 Hertz does for the reading experience. Because every time you're reading text, you're able to decode the text much faster on this display. And that's of course why they put 120 Hertz on the iPad and new tablets are coming with it too. Because when people are using it to read and stuff like that, writing, it's so much better. Also 120 Hertz, as an example, on the Samsung tablets, if you have the 120 Hertz version, the pen seems more accurate. Because when you're drawing, the screen updates over twice as fast. No, sorry, twice as fast, of course, only. And now, is this really a deal breaker? Well, for me, it was. I don't like the iOS that much, but when I tested out the OnePlus Nord with 90 Hertz, I was surprised how much smoother that one felt. And now with 120 Hertz on the 80, I'm not gonna go back to 60 Hertz. It seems so incredibly slow. Many people I've seen on Twitter, Reddit, whatever, say that you can't feel the difference. Well, probably not everyone can, but I can assure you that if you have been using a high display computer screen or mobile and going back to something like this with 60 hertz, it's a pain in the butt. Apple seriously needs to upgrade their display and they should probably do it next year. Because Android phones, some I think it's even have 160 hertz. That's kind of overkill for the battery. But 120 is like a great spot, I think. Everything feels so much smoother. Of course, you use more battery when you're using 120 hertz. But the AT got 65 watt fast charging. So I get a lot more fun out of the phone to the right and it's and it charges much faster you can of course also turn it off if you want to and use 60 hertz some phones i know like the xiaomi mt pro or whatever it is called you can choose between 60 90 and 144 hertz so that's of course also an option for you something that i also noticed with 60 hertz display normally at work i use 165 hertz display and i bought a macbook it 
cost nearly $3,000 and it was with the 60 hertz screen, of course, because most laptops only have that. Mostly only gaming computers, gaming laptops have more. And I felt like everything I did was lagging. Web search, reading text, it felt laggy. That might have something to do with the fact that I'm used to reading on much like better screens than 60 hertz, 120, 144, 160, 240 hertz displays. So both on laptops and phones, Apple needs to do something with that issue. 60 hertz belong in the past. If you if you ever worked on a screen for your work or gaming with 60 hertz and you try 165 as an example or 240 you're like you're never ever going to go back and it's the same thing with phones if you use 120 display phone you're most definitely never ever going to change to a 60 hertz display so in conclusion i personally feel that the difference is massive even though it's only 60 hertz, 60 to 120, everything from browsing, searching, reading, it flows so much better. But the issue is that most people have only tested the 60 hertz displays. So they don't know what they're losing out on. They don't know what 120, 144 hertz feels like. And many people have probably only a 60 hertz computer screen at home or a TV. So if you're a more advanced user, I would highly recommend going for a mobile phone with 120 what? No, sorry, 120 hertz screen. But the catch is the battery, but OnePlus solves that with 65 watt charger. So Apple, this generation 11, um, iPhone 11, 11 Pros have 18 fat, uh, what fast charging. How is that even fast charging in 2019? I don't know. But the latest version, iPhone 12, got 20 watt fast charging. <laughs> that that's not gonna work. You you're gonna like have to triple that, even more probably. 60 watts on iPhone would probably be really good. But when you have a phone that charges this slow, I mean this phone and the Pro version, I think they came with a 5 watt charger. It take it took me like at work nearly 3 hours to charge it and that doesn't work. So Apple is like saving some of the performance, but probably when they come up with 120 hertz screens, people will really realize what they've been missing out on. That's my opinion about 60 hertz versus 120. If you have any questions about the phones, the screens, my experience, whatever, feel free to comment below and I will answer your questions. Kind of crazy that I got this phone for free at work and I just couldn't live with 60 hertz, so I decided to buy that one AT out of my own pocket because I just can't live with Partly iOS and a 60 hertz screen. That just doesn't work for me. That was it, guys. I hope you learned something from this. But yeah, thank you for watching.